We're excited to have Dr. Marion Walker join us for this Ask the Expert video blog series. Dr. Walker is recently retired from Primary Children's Hospital and the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. I'm sure they're very sad. <laughs> Uh, and he is also the chair of our medical advisory board. And also with us is Jennifer Bouchard Johnson, who is our education manager. And my name is Amanda Garzon. I am the director of communications and marketing for the Hydrocephalus Association. So today we have an interesting question um, that we typically see in our adult community, but uh, I think it's good that this is a pediatric version of the question. This is from Wintel, and her son um, has arrested. Uh, hydrocephalus. He was diagnosed when he was one year old with hydrocephalus. Um, she says it's arrested and regressed. He's now turning three. He never had a shunt. And her question is, is there a possibility that his hydrocephalus will come back? Well, there, there is a possibility it would come back. But if he has gone for several years now without progression, uh, it's unlikely. Um, we don't know the straight answer to that. Um, mm -hmm. We we just don't have enough dot data to follow these patients through their life. But as similar to an adult who finds they have hydrocephalus, mm -hmm. uh, uh, he need this child needs to be watched closely for signs that might suggests that there, there's problems. Um, um, educational performance. Um, they might find that he's doing, you know, you, you're doing well in first grade. You're doing well in second grade. You're really just kind of learning how to go to school and mm -hmm. do things. All of a sudden, in third grade, you're doing more abstract concepts. Uh, you're doing some fractions, and you begin to see a fall off from the other, from the peers that you're not keeping up as well. And that would be a warning sign. Something's not right. Um, so monitoring intellectual function is really important. Uh, keeping track of school performance. Can they keep progressing at their level? And it's really at their level. So it's knowing if your kid's a B student, they should, you know, yes. more or less kind of stay in that B student range. If you really see them dropping to a C or especially a D, level, a D student, it might not just be the academics. Something else could be happening. Right. If there's not another explanation. Right. That's, mm -hmm. that's a red flag. Mm -hmm. um, and, what, and monitoring vision is very important just like in the adult population that we, we talked about uh, at a different time. A child can lose vision very slowly mm -hmm. from just a little bit of extra pressure, intracranial pressure. And they might lose it so slowly that they don't know they're losing the vision. And sometimes, uh, it, amazingly, um, it might be hard for the parents to recognize that they're losing the vision because they're in an environment, they're comfortable, they're at home, they're at school, mm -hmm. their friends are helping them around, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden one day it's apparent they really don't see very well. So an annual visual checkup is important in the population that may have what they call arrested or compensated hydrocephalus. Dr. Walker, how long should these children be followed by a neurosurgeon? Well, I, I don't know what the standard might be for that. I followed them every year in my practice until they graduated to adult care. Um, I, I just think it's very important to make sure that there's no loss of function. Intellectual, visual would be the most obvious that you might see. And I think I, I think the advice that I would give to Wintel is that you might not see it at six, you might not see it at 10, but you might see it at 16, or you might see it at 18. So it's all, it's, it's or 40, always, or 48. As, or I was about to say, and then educating your child that at some point they did get this diagnosis and at 48, it could creep up. 
Um, because we have seen that. We mm -hmm. have had people call the association who out of the blue diagnosed at 42, had no idea that they um, had hydrocephalus and maybe their parents knew, maybe they didn't, you know, you never know. Um, but so I think Wintel, the, the advice would be, you know, like this is going to be a lifelong vigilance, uh, but not a hyper vigilance, you know, just, you know, knowing what to keep track of. And I think allowing your child to also, as they become an adult and take over their care, know that at some point they did have this diagnosis and know to keep track of it as well. And I think in a, in a prior uh, session, we were talking about this in relation to adults and Dr. Walker, you said an annual visual exam is appropriate, um, but also by the right type of eye doctor. So, you know, Wintel may be choosing an, an ophthalmologist who is familiar with hydrocephalus who can help you when you're just doing your normal annual eye exam for your, your son who can give you feedback if they start to see something might be a nice kind of peace of mind check-in for you or other parents out there who have children with arrested or compensated hydrocephalus who aren't treated uh, to get that feedback to know that everything's going okay. One other thing I might, I might add is the um... There's no total consensus on when to place a shunt mm -hmm. in children who have uh, larger ventricles. Um, given that this, this boy presumably is otherwise normal, I would follow him closely from a, the way I would do it, and I would not shunt until I saw that there was a need to progress to that. Perhaps over time, we'll learn a, a better answer. Mm -hmm. But some of my colleagues would shunt uh, now. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think there's a right or wrong decision mm -hmm. there. My concern is that uh, I choose not to shunt because I'm well aware of the complications that come from shunting. Mm -hmm and the long-term implications of always needing a shunt. I'm also aware of the immediate um, um, complications, uh, the bleeding and the things from collapsing when there's um, not a very thick brain mantle when you place the shunt in place. Another of my colleagues might 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 just simply say, uh, "Can't afford to wait. I'm going to shop now." So, I I don't think it's right or wrong. I just think that we don't know the full answer at this point in time. So, for these parents, would you say it wouldn't hurt to get a second opinion? I think a second opinion is uh, always a good idea. Great. Well, Wenzel, we hope that we were able to help you a bit with your question and with your son. And uh, we just will be thinking about you and your family. And you know that we're here if you ever need us. And thank you for submitting a question to our Ask the Expert video blog series. <laughs>